it's actually really simple to do. Um, if you've got the tape machine there, you've got an audio interface here. There's your computer, there's the desk. Nice. Um, this would be an eight track audio interface. It can be USB, it can be Firewire, it can be, what's the other one, Thunderbolt? My one's USB, it's a Behringer. It's the cheapest one I could find, um, eight tracks. And I sometimes think, am I, am I just fucking up the sound from this, putting it into there to go into there, but. Right, so you've got your Tascam 688, you've got your Behringer, <laughs> or whatever, eight track audio interface, and we're connecting that to the USB input of our computer. This is literally as simple as eight outputs, eight inputs. And I'll show you how to do that now. The cables we use are a pair of these, left and right, which go to a pair of these, quarter inch. Oh, that one's a bit bendy. Oh well. <laughs> so it's those, left, right, left, right. And okay, and these go into the group outs here. Left, right, and you get four of those cables, so more here. Left, right, left, right. I don't know where the other one is, but <laughs> there's another one. And that will go into seven and eight. And with these ends, you basically got track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with each four of the cables. So they just go in. The USB then goes into the computer. Right, so now we've physically hooked it up, we need to patch it. Okay, normally when we use this machine, we're on patch 12, and that means that all the tracks get routed to group one and two, which is this fader here, one and two. Got lots of ink on my hands. <laughs> but we need to make something that looks like this. I've done it on 14, so I could recall that. And that means that track one and two go to, try and get in focus, track one and two go to group one and two, Track three and four go to group three and four, which is this fader. Five and six go to this fader. And six and uh, <laughs> seven and eight <laughs> go to this fader. I can't uh, count. And the way we do that, if we go back to 12, I'll show you how to actually make it. All right, so we've got to assign main. This shows the outputs. Uh, so we've got group one and two here, assigned to one and two. So we'll put them in, and that's good. Now, three and four, make sure one and two are off. Now we're on three and four, and we can assign tracks three and four to those. Then, same for five and six, make sure that they're not splashing. So we we'll take off three or four again. I thought I'd already done that. Five and six. <laughs> and then six, seven, seven, eight. I keep doing that. There you go. Right, you can ignore the inputs because it really doesn't matter. That's it's only for when you're making recording patches. This is an output patch. The catch with doing it this way, though, is these have to be hard panned left and right. So normally you can make a mix and have that sort of in the center, that there, whatever, and they will all go to this in the proportion of left, right, whatever that they are, and volume as well. But if you're doing them to all eight outputs, you need to have them hard panned like that. So say you've got kick drum, snare, um, and two overheads. This one, or these two, will go to the left and right of this and will appear as track one and track two in your DAW. Then the overheads, three and four, will go to this one and the, the left and the right of this one and they will appear as track three and track four in the DAW, and so on. And that's literally all there is to it. So make this patch, plug in these wires, <laughs> and put them into a Boringa thingy. There you go. And just to quickly show you, in the computer, just create eight tracks. All right, so you've got the input as the Boringa thingy. You just need eight tracks with ascending it inputs. So one, two, three, four. Look, is that still on camera, that one? But yeah, five. <laughs> and you do that for eight, all eight. Um, there's quicker ways of doing this. I missed one, okay. And then, once you arm the tracks, and as long as you've got everything panned on the tape machine, like um, 
like I mentioned, it's all good. And you press play on the tape machine and it'll all come in individually. And that's all there is to it. So actually a final point when it comes to the effects buses. So this is when you send, say you send track five a bit to a tape echo and then back in to aux one. Uh, and maybe you send a vocal to a reverb pedal and it comes back in on aux two. Normally you'd put them back in through here, the effect return, um, but those will not be able to go out of individual outputs. They will get mixed in with, you know, this one. To explain it a bit better, and I'm just using mini cables, <laughs> but I would take aux one out into the effect and I'd send the vocal to it. That's how I'd do that. So that's now sending this track out of that into this. And then this would usually go into here and go back into here if you're mixing and uh, just bouncing it in stereo. But you can put that into an audio interface and just directly into the computer. Then you can have all your bus effects also separate in a DAW, but you'd have to either just use six tracks and reserve two spaces on the on the audio interface for the effects, or you can get like a 12 or 16 track um, USB interface, whatever they call it.